Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. And we were here at Seventh Continenting. And um, <laughs> also prepping for the cruise. Um, talking about a lot of different things, getting ready for the cruise this year. And so I thought, hey, Jason's here, let's do a live q and I said I would do one this week, and um, this is kind of this week. So we, if you guys have questions, we will answer some of them. Uh, if you have questions about whatever, you know, we'll answer some of them. I don't know how many people are watching on a Sunday night. So if you happen to be out there, well, then you got lucky. So let's see. Not many questions yet, but we'll get started, and I'm sure some of them will come in. Yeah. Jason, why do disasters hate you so much? <laughs> well, I didn't say that, actually. But the hurricane and earthquake. That earthquake actually didn't affect you at all, that first one, right? Well, the first one, I was... The plane flight to leave here to Mexico City got delayed. So I was kind of sitting on the runway and was diverted from, originally it was supposed to be directly to Mexico City, it ended up going through Dallas into Mexico City. And my plane was supposed to leave at six, six o'clock at night. I ended up leaving at two in the morning out of Miami to Dallas. And as I'm on the runway, I hear that there's an earthquake that went off in Mexico, the first earthquake. This isn't the bad one. This was the first one that happened a week before the bad one. That one actually wasn't that bad because it happened off the coast of Mexico. Yes. And then it turns out that right after that, after we left Mexico City and we were done broadcasting and we came back here, like three days later, the big earthquake happened. So we've been doing a lot at, at Univision, doing like benefits and all sorts of things to kind of help with aid for for that and for the hurricanes, for a little of everything. We've been doing like disaster relief benefits, which has been pretty cool. All right. So uh, someone said, Tom, did you watch Dunkirk yet? I did not. I just don't watch a lot of stuff, really. It, it takes a while to get around to things. Me and Z watched that together. It's, yeah, but that was because it was super late at night. I was not sticking around to watch it was, that. It was amazing. It really feels like you're in the war. It was incredible, the movie. Well, I'm sure if you were in the war, though, you'd be a lot more afraid. Oh, yes. But the, okay. the sound effects, if that doesn't win best sound effects at the Oscars, there's a problem. Have you played TI4 yet? Me, no. Tom won't let me play with him, so... That <laughs> that answers that for TI4. You guys must have seen my blog, and yeah, that's one that I don't get to play. Well, that game doesn't get to the table much anyway, so. <laughs> Favorite place to eat at Essen? Um, out of all the places that we go to, I really like the Korean place. The the Korea, that... Yeah, there's a Korean place that's really not too far um, from the convention. I know how to get there. I don't know how to tell anyone to get there. And, and of course, besides the Korean place, anything that has currywurst or schnitzel anything that's german is good you haven't been to murder grotto yet right mm, is that that is that that like castle thing no 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 that's just what we call it oh. no the taxi drivers they take us and they drive us in the middle and there's this like lodge in the middle of nowhere with jerry we should go there before you get there yeah but this year i'm coming in the day early so I'm so gonna... we're not going to do it this year actually i'm know. not going to get to see the murder grotto no I it's guess. not it's actually but it, the food is like and the desserts are the best ever had, but I have no idea to get there. I just went with the cool stuff, guys, and they, it's, it was amazing. It's just that when the taxi driver dropped us off, and there was, like, trees and darkness everywhere, and I was like, um, will, will we get murdered here? I hope we go this year. I'd like to see it. All right. Let's see. Am I going for a Marlowe or a Spade look? I don't know. No, no. Let's see. Let's get to some real questions here. Does anyone on the dice are playing tabletop RPGs? Actually, we are working on scheduling an RPG, so uh, we will have that when when, it, when we get it scheduled. I'll let you guys know. Um, um, I can't always sit at Fitzpatrick's. I've been to Fitzpatrick's before in in Essen. That, that, that's a fine place. There's a lot of good restaurants. There's a really good Mongolian barbecue that we went to last year. Oh yes, the Mongolian barbecue. Aldi Aldi told me about that one. It was it's called Mongo's. Wait, did and, you go with us last year? Yes, of course. Oh. Okay. Where we had the zebra and the camel. We didn't eat zebra. Okay, we didn't eat all these weird exotic or animals. Kangaroo, or, or kangaroo. Or kangaroo. But it was cool. It was like not your typical where they only have beef, pork, and chicken and shrimp they had like exotic animals actually so. most of the exotic animals didn't really taste that good the ostrich was good um ostrich was better than i chicken. won't get the camel again the camel was camel was a little good. chewy yeah, it was like chewy it was okay <laughs> but it was cool yeah we went there that was on that was really cool that was the kickstarter dinner 
if you and a friend are sharing a room, how do you both get a swag bag on the cruise? Which is odd because we were just talking about this like 10 <laughs> minutes ago. We were. So the idea Hope is... Hope and pray. Yes. We have enough bags for all the rooms, but we know that some rooms, like Tom's three rooms, aren't going to have a bag. Um, and um, there's, a, there's a few Dice Tower rooms, so th those rooms will probably, the bags will end up going to other people. And we have some that are like families that have two rooms connected. So we're going to try to make sure that each family or each individual gets one, but we can't quite guarantee that much, but we're going to try our best to make sure that everyone who's living in their own house will each get one bag. Do you think that Dice Masters is dying slowly? If yes, is that because of Star Wars Destiny? I, I honestly think they're following the same arc myself. You know, both of them had a really successful start, then nobody could buy them. Both have a fairly expensive secondary market, although Destiny's secondary market is way more expensive than Marvel's. Yes. Um, Except for the third set. Third set's reasonable. The new one? Yeah, because the third set actually, there was enough print of it. So it's actually following the exact same trajectory. Yeah, right. Well, I don't know which one will last longer. As for Dice Masters dying, I mean, let's say let's say Dice Masters did it. Let's say that this was the last set that they did right now. The, the new the Dungeon of Dragon third set, which is coming out and you haven't seen yet. Um, let's say that that one did be, was the end. There's so much out there. I mean, there's millions and billions of combinations. Yeah. And it, was, and it lasted for like two and a half years, which is longer than most CCGs ever last. Yeah, no, I mean, it's... Yeah, in a way, it's, it is dying, and it, I, I think... Is it dying? I think it's like even Well, now. here's the thing. I don't think it's dying, but I don't think people are playing it as much because you know how they change their policy and you can't get it, like, you, you can't get supply of it anymore like you used to be able to. But that's, you know, so if you're, you know, cool stuff doesn't sell it anymore. Most of the online stores, Miniature Market doesn't sell it. So if you're looking to buy new Dice Masters, you can't really get it unless you have a local store. So, I don't know if it's dying as much as the people who would play it aren't able to get it. Is it better to use the cruise transit, this is a very <laughs> shift in direction here, to go back to the airport or use an Uber? Um, Uber will be cheaper, truthfully. The cruise transit, you have a guaranteed thing, though. So, with the cruise transit, they will send you back and they will make sure you make your flight. And if they don't, they will rebook your flight for you with an uber you gotta hope that the uber makes it in time and makes it to the airport in time but either one works um i'll be sending out information i actually got all the room numbers now and i'll be sending out information this week with all of that and if you're looking to get the airport transfer send it to me and we'll collect the money for the airport transfer it's not gonna be a big deal also there's still room for a few people there's like 10 rooms left or something like that so yes yeah we have, we have not much just a few and we're we're going to shut it down real soon because we got to get everything locked in. So um, there's a few rooms left and get on, and it's going to be great. There's tons of swag. Those swag bags are pretty nice this year. What games are the Dice Tower family able to beat Jason at? Slash, Jason, what game are you the worst at? Well, I never do good at Cosmic with you guys. Negotiation games, I, uh, I think. Um, uh, also cooperative games because we all lose together. Yes. We got murdered in Seventh Continent. Yes. <laughs> yes. Seventh Continent is hard but amazing. Yeah, yeah Jason really liked it. Yes, I, I loved it. I really do. I mean, I used to play all those Final Fantasies back in the day, and it had that kind of feel to it. It was amazing. But yeah, I don't know. I'd say Cosmic Encounter or any negotiation game. So in about a week and a half, we'll be doing our top uh, 10 games we're looking forward to from Essen. Maybe... If I can get Jason down to the studio in the next week and a half or so, maybe I'll have him record one, too. Yeah. Where you can talk about your top ten. Yeah. I, you could record at home, I guess. We could just edit it, too. Yeah, but then there's no... If I'm just alone recording, it's not as much fun as if we're getting bounced off of. When I say a game and you go, I would never want to play that one. I want to play all the games that you want. Well, except you, for the, the top five. I think you know what 10. my number one is, right? Gaia Project? Of course. Okay. Well, no, it's Because I love Terra Mystica, and this is like Terra Mystica on steroids. Jason, do you play board games with coworkers? Um, not often, but we actually do play One Night Werewolf at my office. Um, it seems to be the game that is more on a office level. So One Night Werewolf is the game that I play 
at the office. So the mindset of the continent review is going to go up this week. Someone just asked if we're going to review the board game Impulse, and I think I have an answer for you, but I just want Impulse to make sure. The old game? I don't, well, again, it's not that old. Uh, I think this is the one from. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Impulse. This is um, uh, this is from Carl Chudik yeah. and Asmati Games. I really, really disliked it, um, but I only played it once. I disliked it. And other things came up, and I just never reviewed it. But I did not like it. I don't, did you? Were you there when that game? Yes, yes. Did you like it? I don't remember. It I, was okay. I didn't like it. It wasn't anything special. Um, I'm coming to Dice Tower Con 2018 for the first time. Any times for first timer? Any tips for a first timer? Have fun. Yeah, yeah. Just come in and just uh, look for look for open games, or if if you can't find, this is the one tip I'm giving everyone. Because some people said I couldn't find any tables with a one gamers thing. Then you sit down and put a game there, and you put up the sign that says "Need Gamers," and people will come to you. Mm-hmm. Um, have we done a live play of Twilight Struggle yet? Not yet. I don't know that I ever will either, for two main reasons. One, because I don't think it's that interesting to watch. There'll be a lot of sitting there going, "Hmm." hmm. But the second thing is, is that. There are people who are really good at Twilight Struggle. I mean, like, uber good. And I'm not sure I want to show them how poorly I play the game. <laughs> so, in other words, Tom's already projected that if we did that, I would beat him. Jason, what's the status of the world record? So, um, I had to half clean out my garage for this hurricane. So, I have a bunch of games in my living room now, um, for the time being. They're getting moved to another room. And once they get stacked up, once I actually put them into a spreadsheet, then we're going to do a video. Um, so 2020 at this point. Hopefully, no, hopefully, like, before the end of the year, because that's what we promised. Um, the ball is in your court, The sir. ball's in my court, but it should be soon. It should be sooner rather than later. I just have to actually spreadsheet all this stuff first, because they actually, there's all these things that they require, like, you have to have spreadsheets, you have to have a log, you have to have all this stuff, and, you know... If we're gonna if we're gonna do this, then we want to make sure we actually get the record and get get put in the book. What do you think 3D printing has done for the hobby? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess people could make their own minis rather than only minis that are being, you know, made with a cast. But I don't know if it's done a ton because 3D printing is still not good enough quality for actual pieces like you can tell when you get something that's a 3d print versus something that's an actual cast mini you can tell the difference right away well let's say even if it was i don't know that it would change the hobby that much because we have custom card printing yeah and that hasn't really changed the hobby much i mean yeah you can like have people make cheaper decks of cards and stuff but most people aren't printing up their own games of cards and stuff it's so i don't know that the miniatures will change much either yeah um, we haven't done a live play of uh, Marvel Dice Masters for a while. Maybe we should at some point. Yeah. Do I have rainbow suspenders like Mork from Orc? Well, actually... He, he, he does. No, I don't. All right. If he puts them all together, he does. Let's see what we got here. I may have to uh, switch here just so I can make sure. All right, so I have... Um, the taxi driver ones... Is that Taxi Driver? Is that what that is? I don't know. Right. Black and white. Checkered cab one. Hot pepper. Yeah. Okay. Um, fish. That's kind of rainbow. Smiley faces, I see. Flames. Flames. That's like when he, when he rides on the Harley. <laughs> Z and Sam always give me garbage when I wear these. Sparkly. Sparkly ones. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Got red and blue. Those are kind of boring. Uh, MC Escher. Yes, the MC uh, Escher one's cool. Blue lightning. Uh, the lightning ones were on sale. That's why I have so many lightning ones. No, Tom's really secretly a Harley rider. Um, happy, happy, happy smiley face. Happy face. Um, purple, big giant red ones for when it's time to work. Um, musical notes. And um, black and purple. And finally, um, doggies. Dogs. Uh, the, 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 the things like dogs and the fish, those I pick basically by what's on sale at the suspender store. Yes. Because 
suspenders are kind of expensive, so... Yeah, undiscriminating with his suspender choices. And the thing is, most of the time I don't even wear my suspenders on the outside. I, I usually wear them underneath my shirt, between my t-shirt and my, my uh, collared shirt. But on the, when I wear my shirt with a tie, even this, like, these don't necessarily match this tie. But if I'm wearing a suit coat, it doesn't matter. It's all cool when it goes together. I just don't even care what people think. That's really... I'm telling you, like, I don't know when a switch turned in my head. It was maybe... 10 years ago or so, and I was like, why do I care what people think about my, how I dress? I'm just wearing what I want. Mm -hmm. And I have. Um, Tom, I took your advice and took all the duplicate cards out of my favorite game, Seasons. So much better, thanks. Did I say that? To take all the duplicates out of Seasons? I, did you say that? Maybe I did say that. I, I, I would do that. I don't see that. It doesn't thing, matter you know. either way. There's enough cards for variety. Yeah, but that way you don't get two of the same card. Yeah, I don't know. Two it of doesn't... the same is cool. I don't know. I never thought of it that way. Um, Jason, does Tom not trust you with a camera to film your collection as a vlog? No. We're... So for the Guinness thing, we have to do like, you have to count every game and we want to make a nice presentation which will be to you guys first before it goes to Guinness, obviously. I'm awake at 1.30 a.m. in the U.K. to watch this. I'm wondering if you guys have ever been to the U.K. Yeah. Why come each year for the U.K. Games Expo? I, I've been there to London a few times. Um, I'm actually going to be in London in January for my friend's concert. I don't know how many know Lacuna Coil. Um, they're doing a 20th anniversary special concert, and they have, like, these Cirque du Soleil performers that are going to do, like, Cirque du Soleil stuff on the sides of the stage while they play their music in the middle of the stage and it's going to be a really cool concert so I'll be there in January again do you like Unfair? it was okay it wasn't great um let's see does anyone in the Dice Tower family have any pets? Sam has a dog Derek has cats not anymore is that a fair answer? I used to have cats and dogs. But... Jason's got whisked away by the hurricane. It's very <laughs> no, sad. No, I, the last time I had a pet was about 10 years ago, so not recently. Um, seriously, eat the kangaroo. It's great. Try the emu, too. No, the emu is good. I know that's good. Uh, the kangaroo, I don't remember it being great. The kangaroo was good. It was the camel and the zebra that were interesting. Uh, let's see here. Do you think that 2017 is going to be remembered as the year of the reprint? No. I just think you're seeing more games reprinted. Yeah, it's like movies. Like, you know how movies go through that cycle? Like, I just saw Flatliners the other day, and it seems like every movie from the 90s is being reprinted You saw the now. new Flatliners? Yes. Is it, is it better or worse than the old one? <laughs> worse. Um, That's because you're a Kevin Bacon fan. And Kiefer Sutherland and Julia Roberts. I mean, well, it's like anything else. Yeah, they else. really had good actors in that like, first one. Like, they do that with a lot of movies, though. If you notice, like, every movie seems to be a remake nowadays. And it's the same thing with games. Like, you know, if something was successful, why not capitalize on it and reprint it? And so there has been a lot of reprints this year. I don't know if it's a year of the reprint because there's a lot of good original nah, games. there was a lot of reprints last year. There's been a lot of reprints every year, and every year you'll see more reprints because there will be more games that have been printed in the past to reprint. Yes. It's I just mean, a numbers thing. If anything, this year feels like the year of the expansion. It seems like there's an expansion for everything this year. On the day of the cruise, we are arriving very early in the morning. Is there anything, activities happening in the morning, what should we do before we board the ship? Uh, get to the cruise port. Because yeah, seriously, don't do anything. Yeah, Go right get to, to the, the cruise ship. Port because if you're not there by 10, usually they let people on about 11 or 11.15. So get there at like 10 if you can, if you're arriving that early. Yeah, eat breakfast um, first maybe. Yeah, eat breakfast. If, if you have time, eat breakfast and then get to the ship. But or don't eat breakfast because you don't have to pay for lunch. There'll be food on the ship. Um, I don't eat breakfast. I changed my mind. But like us, we get there at 7 in the morning. We're setting up the ship for like four hours before you guys get there. So there's nothing going on before the ship opens other than get there because... There will be lines to get on, and you want to get on early enough to register with us early. Uh, let's see here. Are you guys going to pack some plug next month? I am. Jason is undecided. Uh, why do board games always become associated with D&D? 
It seems most people in board gaming gravitate towards mysticism and RPGs. I never, I never associated board games with D and D. Yeah, I don't get that either. I mean, I know there's a there's a subset of gamers who like Dungeons and Dragons and RPGs, but I don't even know if that is like a. That's not a majority for sure. Like if you go to our, our gaming meetup, you'll see some people playing fantasy games there, but you'll see just as many people playing Splendor, which has no fantasy theme. You know, heavy Euro games and all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I never, I, I mean, I think role-playing and board games are two different things. Like, video games and board games are two different things. Which Cool Stuff location is having the Friday night event before the cruise? Cool Stuff Hollywood, the same as last year. It is, although it is a bit of a pain. Um, and that's because it's Friday night, which crosses Friday night magic. Yes. It's unfortunate, but that is what it is. But I think, I know that it was mentioned that the new Cool Stuff store, which should be open by then... Might have the Friday Night Magic instead, or the Magic players will be there and we'll have the store there. It's being worked on, but we're going to have a nice party again. Does a Guinness Book representative have to be present when you inventory your collection? Only if we wanted to pay $10,000, which we're not doing. It's really, oh my <laughs> goodness, ridiculous about the Guinness Book of World Records. I mean, they for $10,000, they will have someone come up and help you count. For $10,000, I will go help Jason count. He's doing it for free, even better. <laughs> what? What? Oh, shoot. I didn't know there was a charge when you came over to do the video. All right. Uh, someone wants to know a tip to increase your win rates um, in board games because you're so smart. I don't know. I mean, I just, you know, I try to, like, pay attention. Paying attention in the game is very important to winning. If you could pay attention and like see how one rule leads to another and kind of think a few moves ahead, that's usually uh, the best thing to do. All right, let's see. What do we think of? Well, we haven't played that game yet. Um, any reviews for tabletop? I think the tabletop or stuff is fantastic. I really like them. Table person, toppers they're are great. super awesome. I really like them. Ta table toppers are super. Highly awesome. recommended. Yes. Oh, look, look at the person right below. I don't know. I don't get it. He's the one who sent us the copy. Oh. Yes. So you haven't played Rising Sun yet? No, I have played it. Oh, yeah. we were all, You were in the game with us. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Of course Sorry. I played it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, is Vernon done with that yet? I guess he is. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, 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 Wait, did you get it from him on Saturday? No, because we, we're going to shoot it. I'm shooting a Rising Sun video in case anyone doesn't want to know. And then we're sending it back to you, Thomas. We do see you there. What are you shooting? A comparison of Rising Sun and Blood Rage. Oh, brother. It's going to be great. It's going to be the Lang is going to reach through the screen and slap you. He's mm -hmm. going to say they're not the same. Well, that's why I'm doing a compare and contrast of Blood Rage and Rising Sun. Oh, and, my and, goodness. And I can say Rising Sun, I think, is amazingly awesome. You like it better than Blood Rage? Um, no. Ooh, I do. No, and it's only... The reason I don't is because of the teaming up, the yin-yang thing... I don't like the alliance thing. Well, I know that because you don't ally. You I wanted to ally. Want, all I said was, pay me a coin and you can be my ally. But I shouldn't have to pay. Fine, and don't be my ally. If you really <laughs> want to be my ally, all I was asking was for one coin. This should be a Tom Think segment. Should you bribe people to be your ally? I'm or not should bribing. You let them be your ally? It was a cost a cost to be my ally. That's all it was. I have a lot of mouths to feed, and I need that extra coin. But you, but I needed that coin too. And look what happened. Neither one of us did well because we didn't ally. Some of us did weller than others. Yeah, I did weller than you in that game. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, Gloomhaven scratched a hero quest type itch. No, I love Gloomhaven. Mm. I think it's amazing. But I don't think it scratches the hero quest. They're very different. I mean, like this is Gloomhaven is like a ten in complexity compared to Hero Quest. Yeah. Being like a two. But Gloomhaven's really cool. Gloomhaven has that whole. I guess it's sort of a deck building game. Like your deck is your life, and the way you play the cards, and then you can bring cards back. But you start burning out your cards, and then you die. And it's it's really cool. Gloomhaven's really cool. And I will say. Um, and this is switching. Someone mentioned that 3D printing changes the design side. That I agree on. I think 
if you want to design a game now, you can 3D print the pieces for it. You can print the cards. You can make a really nice prototype. You can test out pieces. So on the design production side of things, oh yes, it's going to have massive effects there. Yeah. Um, what game has the most boring sounding theme but actually makes a great game? God, there's so many. And I'm going to be the anti-Tom in this one, but anything fantasy, like fantasy is not my favorite theme, but there's a lot of really good fantasy games that I'm not as much of a fantasy theme. I like Mediterranean. Tom hates Mediterranean, but I like Mediterranean. I don't hate the Mediterranean. I hate trading. But you know what? Actually, my number one dislike theme at this point is actually generic fantasy. Really? Well, no, but not it's not, not, not fantasy, <laughs> but generic fantasy. It's like the same... Like, hey, I've got orcs I have that are elf. fighting the elves. Exactly. It's so boring, and it's the same stuff, and everyone has a magic missile and a sword of plus one, and it's like, come on. All right, let's see. What do you think of companies repackaging their games like Roll for the Galaxies or making two-player versions like Seven Wonders? If you think Roll for the Galaxy is a repackaged version of Race for the Galaxy, then you've played neither. Yeah, they're completely There's a lot, different. Well, not saying completely. There's a lot of similarities. But yeah. they're, it's, it's not like a repackage. It's a completely new game. It, it's a dice version of the game. And, and I... I mean, and Seven Wonders Duel is very different than Seven Wonders as well. Oh, very different. And I actually like Seven Wonders Duel better. Roll for the Galaxy, Race for the Galaxy? You have to watch my top 100 to see which one I like better. I, I like Roll better. But I said years ago, if you guys remember that top 10 dice games, when everyone laughed at me for being the cult of the unreleased, I said Roll for the Galaxy is going to be an amazing game and everyone's going to be talking about it. If I could go back in time, I would still laugh. I just want you to know that. <laughs> All right. Have you played Time Stories? Yes. Which ones? Um, everyone so far. Well, you have. Who are you playing with? Myself. That's well, okay. Um, I played multiple roles and played by myself <laughs> because I'm not part of. The, oh, I wasn't part of the live my, plays. Is that what we're done doing on live plays? So I might be able to play with you the rest of them. Well, yesterday uh, or this past day, we played uh, Charterstone. Uh, we Ooh. started playing through Cheddar Stone, but honestly, that is, I think, the extent of me being able to talk about it. So I will give my opinions when we're allowed to. Uh, all right, let's see here. Are there any games you absolutely love but will never play with each other? Well, Jason doesn't have anything on that list, I think, at all. Um, no, I mean... He would play anything. I would. I would even get Tom to play 18X again if, if he could. Uh, yeah, Jason can't play Twilight Imperium with me, or <laughs> Exodus Proxima Centauri, or any game involved attacking other people. A any game that, yeah, any game that inv involves space races going for territory and attacking each other. Um, what do you consider the most groundbreaking revolutionary game out right now? Groundbreaking and revolutionary. Well, Seventh Continent's kind of newish but it's not i don't know if it's revolutionary. it's not revolutionary but the way they see i think seven continent is taking two interesting ideas and putting them there they're taking that number system which we saw in unlocked okay yes. it has some similarities with the unlocked although yes. seven continent was designed before unlocked so it's probably the first one to do it and yes. then they're using the choose your own adventure which isn't necessarily new but the way that game does it does it a, a pretty interesting way yeah i mean i don't know like there's a lot of good things coming up, but I don't know if anything's like groundbreaking, revolutionary right now. Like, this is. If you asked me this last year, I would have said World of Yoho is the most groundbreaking, revolutionary thing ever. Um, but this year, I don't feel like anything is so groundbreaking and revolutionary. What are your favorite video games at the moment? Uh, for me, I'm playing Heroes of Might Magic 3, which is an old game, but I'm really enjoying it. FIFA. It's the only thing we play at work, so I play FIFA all the time. Uh, FIFA soccer. <laughs> I mean, Zelda Breath of the Wild is amazing, but now that I've beaten it, I've cooled down on it a lot. And Star Wars anything. Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, and for those of you who have an iPhone, Spectromancer doesn't work. Richard Garfield's old game Spectromancer doesn't work with iOS 11, so I got into Hearthstone because it was the closest thing to Spectromancer. Is there any other that I don't think close? Spectrum Answer is Richard Garfield's game. Yeah, it is. Do you know Richard Garfield emailed me two days ago? Did he? So awesome. I'm so cool. I know. He was actually correcting me on an erroneous rule I made. 
on his game. Oh, that's so, why. Uh, whatever. All right. <laughs> do you think you'll need to have the ties and suspender with the same theme? Well, I do have the hot peppers that are the same. I usually don't buy the sets together. They sell them in sets. I don't usually buy them together because they, I don't really like them. I, I, I wish I could get, like, really cool ones together. Um, does my wife collect anything? I don't think she collects things. She 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 does things. She's not a, a big collector. Um. Oh, that my suspenders were here. That's that's because we're doing it in my room here, and I I get dressed in this room. So, Tom, can Jason sing? No. It, that that's a one day. One day <laughs> I will get my song out to the world. Um. All right. Have you already played Clans of Caledonia? Yes, we played it last week, actually. Yes. What are your thoughts on that game now that you've oh, had I time like to it. think about now, it? Now that I realize Clans of Caledonia, the guy emailed us. It's the guy who emailed us a few a while ago and said, would you play my game? I know you liked my other game. Yeah, we, we the, his first game that we played of his was Green uh, Green Deal. Yes, and I remember we really good. Well, we got Green Deal, and I was like, all right, I'll play this propaganda piece. Because that's what I thought it was. And it was a really solid game. I was very and impressed by it. Clans of Caledonia was really good. I mean, it's funny because the names of the clans, like, I was McDonald's, so I kept saying the whole time that I had a farm and going E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> and everyone remember. at the table was rolling their eyes. And, and Clan McGregor. And I was like, you win? Yeah, it's actually, it's amazing how many pieces are in that box. The box is probably a little too small for the game, honestly. Um, the game doesn't look that fantastic set up on the table, um, but it, it is, there's a lot of, uh, it's like so open-ended, the options that you have. Yeah. Really just a lot of things that you can do. It's, it's, it's a wonderful game. Jason, what are your thoughts on The Godfather? I guess they're not being specific, so movie slash game. Movie, one of the best ever. Um, not so much the third one, but the first two are, are two of the best movies ever. And the game is amazing i mean it fits in in the i considered it a trilogy blood rage godfather and rising sun because they're all kind of the same kind of area control ish kind of games where you have special powers that you could kind of get as you go along but i really like the whole money in the in the um in the metal cases thing because it reminds me of junta a lot which i used to love junta and you got to get to the bank and you got to get your money in and make sure no one can get your money before you get it in and it's just a well done game eric lang's hot like he's an amazing designer he's he's hot right now not 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 in those terms but i mean as a designer he's super hot and his games are are just stop just all stop on your fire head. all right and I guess ice and fire now. My right? daughter Scarlet wants to say good night to you before she goes to bed. Good night, Scarlet. She's ten. Oh, sorry. Good night, Scarlet. <laughs> um, do either of you think Magic Era Arena, the Planeswalkers, will have any new expansions, or is it over? I wish they had expansions, but it's they won't. It's dead. And you know what? Boo to Wizards of the Coast. We we knew this was gonna happen. You said this at the beginning. Boo to Wizard of the Coast for letting that happen. They did what three time. things? They did the two big boxes and the one little box, and that was it. Yeah. No, they did. No, they did one big box and two smaller ones. That's what it was. No, they did a second big box. I thought. Well, it was a bigish, I guess. But um, Flatliner got a zero on Rotten Tomato. I haven't. It seen wasn't that. zero bad, but it was probably like two out of ten bad. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Is another Terminator movie coming out? Uh, oh, yeah, with Arnold Schwarzenegger's coming back and Linda Hamilton. No, here's what I care about. Thor. Thor looks like the best. Thor. I am more excited about Thor than I am about Star Wars. No. That's because you haven't seen any Star Wars commercials yet. Wait till the Star Wars commercials start coming out. Is the trailer out, out that, that, No, yeah. they haven't put out. A, they put out the teaser is and the that's Infinity it. Is the War trailer out yet? No. No. All right. The problem with Star Wars is they haven't been hyping it yet, so no one knows that's how awesome it's going to be. because everyone is going to go watch it anyway. Exactly. What's better, Rogue One or Star Wars Episode Seven? Rogue One. I don't know. I think it, you know. I was talking to my kids. Now listen, my kids did not like Rogue One as much. They said they didn't really like the characters that much, 
And they said it, they didn't like the ending. And that's a reasonable thing. But the ending was perfect. Yeah, I, I, I liked it. The ending was so perfect. It, sorry, yeah. sorry for spoilers here, but I love the No! It, 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 if they no spoilers! If they haven't seen any Star Wars movie yet, then, then they deserve to be spoiled at this point. No. Okay. Um, okay, what are your expectations of Charterstone? I will ask this to Jason. So. Um... I don't know. I don't know, but I, you know, I'm hoping it's really good. I mean, it's. I haven't it's said. His, I haven't told him anything about it's it. It's his first time as a, doing like a legacy kind of game, so, I, I mean, all his other games are really well done, even though you know I, I don't like um, the one, the one with the max. It just came out before this. You don't like side. I like side. I just think that the powers aren't balanced. I think that it's imbalanced. Shame. I liked it, but I thought that it was imbalanced. Cool. I, I love the, the way you take your cubes and they go from here to here and they change, like, you know, your, your currency. I love. I love Scythe, but I felt it was imbalanced. But Charterstone, what he does with the other games, like um, Viticulture, etc., I really think that this could be a really cool legacy game. The Orville or Discovery? Have you seen either? You know you're not there? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Discovery is a new Star Trek show that CBS just put on their all-demand access. Oh, okay. When I was at the hotel, I saw part of one episode and fell asleep during it, but I wasn't that interested in it. Um, I mean, maybe it's good, but this all-demand access thing from CBS, they have the worst... A and what's the Orville? ...worst thing. Orville is the one with uh, Seth MacFarlane doing it. It's almost like a Star Trek parody, except it's more straightforward than that. Okay. Uh, to quote Sam here, there's Star Trek fans, and then there's Star Wars fans. And Star Wars fans are geeks who are also cool. I don't think Sam has actually said that phrase. He said that to Jamie at the last live show. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> um, let's see here. And I, I love Star Wars, not Star Trek. Is Betrayal from Baldur's Gate a better version than House on the Hill? Watch a review this week, and I'll let you know what I think. I haven't played it yet, but I'm looking forward to it because I really like it. Um, how many boxes of the new Star Wars Destiny Empire Award did you buy, Jason? Did you get everything yet? I got six of them. I haven't opened them yet. I got six Gravity Feeds again, but I haven't opened Sucks. it yet. Um, but I know who's in there, so we'll, you know... You, What's you'll be the big character this time? Grand Admiral Thrawn. Oh, well, that's right. I did hear about that. Yes. Um, and I don't know what else. I know Grand Admiral Thrawn's in there. He's the expensive one. You shouldn't ask for a coin. You both benefit already in Rising Sun, Tom. I have to side with Jason. Yes, thank you. No, I'm just saying, if he wanted to... If I was going to have him drag me down, I felt like our skill you level... dragging down. We I feel like our skill level was awesome a one-coin difference. We could have been, as I've, as we've already termed our team, team Listen, Vaseline. I felt like the help you would have got from our thing would have benefited you slightly more than me. At it would have done. Difference. It would have benefited us equally. I, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like that was true. Team Vaseline. It would have been perfect. We were like there, ready you to go. You say that. I feel like saying two coins now. <laughs> and you will next time we play. Actually, I believe that is what happened in the game. Yes, yes, I was like, come on, come on. So, but, yes. Oh, that's my game of the year. What? Down one. Up two. Early on? Up one. Photosynthesis? Yes! Oh, you really like that one? I played it now, like, at least 30 times. Well, I just, I just, uh, have really, really been enjoying this. It is one of my favorite games of the year. It's unbelievably interesting for how few rules it has yes yes uh, is it out yet officially or is it still people can't get it they had like 600 copies at uh and then they they sold a whole bunch beyond that didn't they oh, like, let me see they they sold all the copies beyond that like they were selling them at gen con like for pre-order and that they would ship it to everyone uh it's out of stock i don't think it ever came in yet Bah, who knows all right um Let's see. Three D printing is starting to change to making it buildings in a miniature world. That's true. For miniature gaming, probably you can just you know print out your own 
mm -hmm. terrain. Does Arcadia Quest fall under generic fantasy? Yeah, I guess there's orcs and goblins in it, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's fantasy. It, it's fantasy. That's true. But the game was so fun, I didn't care. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on Paper Tales? I believe we're reviewing that this week, actually. Very, very positive, though. Paper Tales. You haven't played that. You would like it. Will you do a Christmas idea list this year? Yes, we'll do those every year. Oh, we should be doing those soon, actually, shouldn't we? Okay. Yes. Um, people are keep saying, you know, good to see you survive the hurricane and everything, and we appreciate that and everything. But really, right now, think about the folks in um, Puerto Rico because it's way worse for them yes, than I it mean, is for us. We're, they still Miami don't have is power. completely up and running. There's yeah. nothing down here, right? H having just trees on the front of your lawn isn't a big deal. And, you Not know. compared to what they're going through. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, ooh. I'm going to need to go uh, delete. I'm going to need to go ban someone. Let me see if I can find them. <laughs> up oh, already oh. handled yay someone's been deleting this for us all right fantastic all right let's see here all right oh, yeah someone's been deleting stuff for us <laughs> thank see. you all right let's see here um thank you moderators <laughs> okay um Sorry, we're like jumping around looking for a good thing. Do you do anything special for Halloween? E sort of. We go to Halloween. Well, I go every year, and I've been convincing Tom to go now lately. Haven't I gone like the last three years now? No, two. I didn't go two years ago. I went two out of the last you three. You went two out of the last three. Halloween Horror Nights in Universal Orlando is like the coolest Halloween thing ever. I don't know if I'd agree on that. The, horror I mean. ha the Haunted Houses, like this year, it's... The Shining and Saw. I'll go to that. I'm not going to that. American Horror Story. I'm not going to that. Um, the Blum House of Horrors. I'll do that. That sounds. What is that? Insidious and Sinister and The Purge, all in one. And the yeah. Purge inside place. The, and they're having outside Purge too. Well, the outside one doesn't bother me so much when the people run up to you. And Ash and the Evil Dead. Well, that one is that one going to be scary or That's going to be the comedy horror one. And there's a whole bunch of original ones. I like the original ones a lot. That Wild West one last year was really fun. Yes, it was. And Melody, Melody, Melody wants to go again, actually. Yeah, we, it's, that's, that's weird. I uh... so haunted houses are our thing, and then and then I always have candy out at my house for everyone who comes around. I have bought so much candy, like. Just it's too much, really. Well, that's. It, it's it's half of the candy. Goes to the Dysor Cruise it's for the Halloween. The other half is for. As everyone Cruise. remembers, when they were waiting on the registration line last year, there was all those candies in buckets. That was the Halloween candy leftovers. No, it's not. Well, this year it's not leftovers. This year I'm planning it for the cruise. So <laughs> I just ordered that a few days ago. So it's Halloween in December. Um. Let's see here. Blah blah blah. What are your thoughts on doing a themed 24-hour playthrough? Oh my goodness, no. Okay. 24 hours are so hard to do. To add a theme to it would be even worse. If you notice, we did two 24-hour playthroughs this year. And the mm -hmm. last one we did was like in February or March. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> they're just a lot of work. They're a lot of work and they're very expensive. Yes. And the uh, as I said, because uh, bringing people in to do them costs money. But even just, not just much that, you need to make sure that there's food for everybody. Uh, we have to stay in hotels and stuff. And you and some people could say, well, just do it there in Miami. Well, we did that the first year, and it was just it was so insane. convoluted, right? Because we have to have cars and people going home, and you can't just go grab food when you want to, and it disrupts the households. It just, it's so, prom it, it ran so much more smoothly this year. I mean, way more smoothly than it's ever run before. And that that came at the cost of, well, cost. Um, and so I would rather pay and have it go much more smoothly. Unfortunately, you just can't afford to do that all the time. 
Yeah. This thing keeps shocking me. What in the world? I already took. I already took it. All right. Let's see here. How far are we behind? Ten minutes. That's not too bad. Let's see. Are you looking forward to the new Blade Runner? Yes. 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 And I heard it's like one of the best sci-fi movies of all time. I mean, I love the original. Um. Well, I have yet to see the original. No, I'm serious. I've never seen it. Blade Runner is. I mean, all there's so many movies that were made after Blade Runner because of Blade Runner. It's like the godfather of sci-fi movies. I don't know to say that because I don't know if that's true or not. Anyway, speaking of Godfather Star Wars, uh, Star Wars uh, Trevin says it's 159 minutes. That's pretty cool. That's two and a half hours. 30 minutes of it's going to be Luke talking. Yeah. Um... Let's see here. Oh, now, Clank in Space is a better theme of the game than Clank. Maybe. Yeah, I mean... Meeple War, Meeple Circus. Meeple Circus. Meeple Circus. Oh, I you mean, liked Meeple Circus, I loved you? Meeple Circus. That was like... It's a stacking game, but it's a fun stacking game. But it's also a thinky stacking game, it right? Is. You're sitting there trying to figure out the best way to get points... And there's like five different ways to score points, and you have to figure out which one's going to get you the most. But you don't have too long to think about it, really. I mean, while you got to be stacking. Because the music's going do 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 do, and I love circus music. I agree. My daughter Anaya Brielle is having her seventh birthday this Friday. Happy birthday to you, Anaya. Happy birthday to you, Anaya. Sounds like the beginning of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, would you like Food Chain Magnet with a different theme, or is it the theme that really draws you to the game? Um, well, it's interesting because I absolutely love the theme. Because, you know, growing up, I was like one of those, I guess, a typical 80s McDonald's baby, I guess you'd call it. Like... Fast food was, like, the thing in the 80s. So I love the theme, but even if it's a different theme, it's such an amazing game. It doesn't matter what the theme is in that game. It's just a great game in general. Uh, let's see here. It seems that some of your last few live shows have not shown up on YouTube. Are there any plans to put these up, or did problems come up when filming them? I feel like all our live shows have shown up on YouTube. Yeah. Next time, Tom will ask for two coins. Yes. No, next time we need to break up the Sam and whoever he was a partner with. Was it Vernon? Um, yeah, Sam and Vernon were together the whole time. We need time. to break that nonsense up. You can't, though. If they decide to be a team, then we should have been a team, too. That was the whole point. No. I'm not going to be a team because I'm forced to be a team. I'm my own man. But for one coin, I'll be your man. <laughs> Two coins. Uh, if you pay me two coins, you're gonna be my my man. All right. Um. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What are your What are your favorite hobbies after board games? Um. Well, I like video games, music, music very much. Music. I mean, I saw someone commented about my Epica shirt. Epica just played with Luke and Coil last week, so I saw them both. Um, big, big, big music fan. Movies, obviously. Um, I could talk about like any movie because I'm actually in the Writers Guild and I get to see every movie for free. <laughs> um, and sports, lots of sports. I play soccer, um, except when I'm breaking my wrist, as some people have seen. I um, used to play football. I played ice hockey. I could, I rollerblade. I rollerblade and rollerblade. I you know, lots of things I like to do. So oh, and scuba diving. That's true. Which we will do in. again. Are you going to do that again? On of course course I will. You're not going to pick something different? Um, or you just like scuba diving No, because I was already invited back by Mika, who, who went scuba diving with me last year, said he wants to do it again. I'm like, sounds good to me. All right. Um, why do you have Star Ticket to Ride 10th edition in Spanish? That's because they just print it in different languages and a different size. And the Spanish box is facing that way because I'm trying to get my kids to learn Spanish. It's not really the reason. It's just that's the way it is. 
when will we get some more Jason game reviews? Well, probably soon. We ran into a few problems. One was called Hurricane. <laughs> Irma, yes. And two, <laughs> Hurricane Irma. Two is just that we had some other logistical with some cash flow problems, but we'll, we'll hopefully yeah. work, work through that. I, I lost my editing machine for a little bit, but it'll, you know, we're, we're working around it, so um, we're it, soon, 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 soon. Um, has Seamon surpassed Fantasy Flight Games in game production using miniatures? Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now, now to be clear, I'm not saying that Seamon's production completely surpasses Fantasy Flight. So Fantasy Flight is great production. Oh, yeah. And they're, they have a lot of great stuff in their games. But on miniatures alone, they're better. It depends, though. I'm going to put the caveat because I feel like the X-Wing miniatures are the best miniatures I've seen. So the That's painted true. miniatures from Fantasy Flight are better, but the unpainted miniatures, like the miniatures in Rebellion versus the miniatures in the Simon game, Simon has better... Miniatures, Those are good miniatures in Rebellion, though, too. But they are, but they're not as good as the ones in a Simon game. It's it's different. Unpainted ones, I give Simon the advantage, but painted minis, Fantasy Flight, I give the advantage. What is your favorite beverage to have when you are playing? Um, I don't know, water or or soapy water. I don't know. Just actually, Jason will drink whatever's there. Yeah, I don't drink soda so much. So anything but soda, to be to be honest, or or coffee. Um, let's see here. Have you thought of the next big upgrade for next year's fundraiser? Well, actually, I don't think I'm going to have a big upgrade for next year's fundraiser. I think we need to kind of just level out and try to get better across the board and survive on what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. I guess doing the, uh... Doing the uh, Q and A at this hour at night brings out the uh, the spammers. We don't normally have this many. It's very exciting. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's interesting. I have four kids and one on the way. I'm just curious. Just five. Um, just curious. But she has seven. How often do you get to game non work related with or without the family? I don't know. I just do it. Um, I just make time. That's all. I, I don't know how to explain it. I just do it. I just don't do a lot of other things, really. I game, work, spend time with family. That's it. I don't really do a lot of other stuff. Um, what Rocky Horror character would you each be? <laughs> I'd say I'm Riff Raff. You're Dr. Scott. I, I don't want to be in that This that man picture. has no neck. This man has no neck. I don't want to be in that picture. Um, can I be the professor guy? That's Dr. Scott. Oh, is that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's, That's what I just said. To the left. Yes, and, and I'm Riff Raff. All right. Um, let's see here. Um, I have not played Massive Darkness still. That's why Sam did the review by himself. Otherwise, I would have did it with him. Do you think this year has already eclipsed last year as far as quality in games? I don't know. It's, it's really hard to tell. Like, we, we will always talk about a year like, oh, this year is better or worse than last year or whatever. But you really can't tell till you have, like, a backwards look at a year. I, so far, tell, so. I feel like 2016 was better than 2017. I'm, But Essen hasn't come around yet, so we haven't seen the Essen games. But I feel like 2016 was better than 2017. It's really hard to tell, though. I mean, this is definitely the year of Kickstarter. We have two Kickstarter yes. games for sure, Seventh Continent and Gloomhaven, and Gloomhaven, that are in the top, that are easily in the top and running for top game of the year. Yes. Easily. They both have a shot at winning like get awards for being best game of the year. Yes. Um, and it, we're definitely seeing more of these legacy campaign style games. I really think Charterstone and Pandemic Legacy 2 are going to be big. Um, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But... Uh, who knows? I mean, I'm happy with the new games that come out all the time. There's oh, always yeah. great games. Not that, not that the games are bad this year. It just doesn't feel as like... It hasn't felt like there's been huge, massive releases this year. This is a good question. What's a favorite dish slash food your grandmother made? Um, she made three things that I really like. She made amazing matzo ball soup. Amazing. That sounds good. Um, she made something called Kreplok, which is like... Sounds like a new board game title. <laughs> 
It's like this fried chicken skin dish. I don't know how to describe it, but it's really good. Um, as you can tell, my grandmother was, was Jewish. She also made noodle kugel, amazing. And she made goulash. She's also from Hungary, my grandmother. And she made goulash, and amazing. And borscht, and borscht. She made a whole bunch of things. My grandma, like, and I don't mean any disrespect to my mom, because my mom was... I, as you heard before, I grew up as, as as a McDonald's baby. My mom doesn't cook. I mean, she does, but not often, because um, my mom worked. But my grandma used to cook like, oh, her meals were the best. I miss my grandma's meals. They were so good. My grandmother couldn't cook. In fact, <laughs> you just waited the whole time while I talked about all this great food to say my grandmother doesn't cook. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm jealous is what I'm saying. My grandmother, every time we go over, we'd be like, we're visiting grandma's house today. And I'd be like, oh, yes, I'm going to get the best food. But to be fair, my mom could cook well. My, my wife can cook well. But my grandmother, she would make food for us. She'd be like, corn's ready. So she'd bring out the corn and we would eat a little bit of corn. Then pretty soon, okay, pork's done. So then we eat some pork. And then later, the green beans finished. It was, yeah. it was my, like a progressive meal in the house. Okay, I, I, my mom does make some good food too. She makes really good pasta. And you know what else she makes that's really good? She makes really, really good barbecue. Like, yeah, but you know, part of the thing here is you never cook. I know. You don't even own pots, I think. No, I do. Yeah, because for when your mom comes over, that's the only time they get used. Yeah, like when they come visit from New York and I'm like, hey, you guys can stay at my place for a little bit. Oh, here's All some I pots ask and pans. is some cooking. All right, well, we only got a few minutes left. Let's zoom through here and look for some things. Are we looking forward to Justice League? No. Um, I hope it's good. I, I I have bad vibes on that one. They already dropped the director. That's just bad vibes, Justice League. What's your favorite? Who's your favorite drummer? Uh, Neil Peart from Rush. He's amazing. How about the Steve Jackson version of Port Royale versus the Pegasus version? So I haven't actually com compared them side to side. I, I need to do that. This, the Steve Jackson one plays, as far as I can tell, exactly the same. The same. Yeah. But I think they changed the flags. I think in the... And the artwork. Yeah, the artwork's changed. No, no. Only the artwork in a box. It's still that lookout style artwork inside. Oh, it is? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Then, yay. Yeah. But the flags, like in the in the Pegasus one, are like green, blue, red, whatever. In the, in the Steve Jackson one, it's like Brit Britain, Spain. Oh, I think those okay. are the changes. And there's no two expansions. There's only the base game, right? Or do you get both expansions? Yeah, in but there? I just played one of the expansions the other night, and it was essentially just the same game with a few with, different cards. Yeah. Um, when is the next Eric Tom video podcast? This coming Wednesday. Blah, 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 blah. People like matzo ball soup. Of course. And goulash. Oh, she... Uh, but not borscht. Borscht is really good. If if it's made well, borscht is really good. All right. Oh, we caught up in questions. Just played Chimera Station today, my wife. Oh, you played Chimera Station with me, right? What did um, you think of that game? That's where you put the workers together and added pieces to them. Oh. You were the claw meister. Remember? I was the claws. I was the claws. Um, no, that was that was a lot of fun. Building the monsters and getting like more powers based on how many things you had on your monster head was really cool yeah it's a really it's a really neat game tasty minstrel is really on a roll between the har harvest which i think is a really fine game and exodus fleet and the chimera station there and then of course then bringing into america orleans and um or orleans is actually another expansion's coming out of Essen. a third one no 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 a sequel it's a new game by the same designer is it a new game? Yeah. Yeah, I heard there's another bag builder, but I also heard it's also an expansion. Or is there not? It's just a new game. I don't... If there's an expansion, I think it's just Trade and Intrigue, the one we've already seen. Oh, okay. But yeah, there's new stuff. Yeah, anyway, so they brought Orleans, and they did Coliseum, and they... What's the other game that... that oh, the... The... Uh, ya, ya, Yokohama. Yeah. yeah they're really... I mean, Tasty Mitchell's on them. You know, people always say, Tom Vassal doesn't like Euros. But I really like the Euros that Tasty Minstrel does. Not always. Sometimes they're small I, stuff. I like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Japanese ones, too. I really liked um, Ponzi Scheme. I know you didn't like it much, but I loved Ponzi Scheme. Okay. Well, folks, we're going to end here. And that's the end of that. We appreciate you guys coming on and watching us. Thanks so much. Um, 
once again, we like to point out, if you want to come on that cruise, you seriously better sign there, up this week. There's Please. like I, I feel very left. confident they're going to be sold. We got people who are already saying they're going to claim some of them. So yes. there's at the end. We got some cool things that might be happening on the cruise, but we can't talk about them yet. And we have cool games giving out on the cruise. We have everything cool. And to finalize that, everyone will be getting a list that they can pick the library soon. Ooh. <laughs> Pick I'm still the picking the library. The you can help me pick the library. You can help Tom pick the library. Alrighty. Well, anywho, until next time, I'm Tom Basil. Jason Levine. And you've been watching live on the Dice Tower. Now get off my show, you fool! Oh, no! That was not even a little convincing. So I'm going to throw it your was. phone at the wall, and then when you weep... It was a little... It was convincing. It wasn't convincing.